What's up, Los Angeles? Welcome back to the Rams Skinny here on the LA Football Network. Hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas. A happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, whatever it is you celebrate. Happy holidays to all. Um, it's a great time of year with the new year coming up. So an early happy new year. I cannot believe 2023 is already almost over and we are into 2024. It seems like just yesterday we were all on lockdown still in 2020. And now that is almost four years behind us. That is wild to think about. Uh, joining me as we preview this Rams Giants game, as always, the man with the hair, the great dress attire, Mr. Ryan Skinny T. Anderson. What's up, brother? How you doing? How was your Christmas? Uh, Christmas was good. Uh, you know, I got to uh, share with uh, a friend that uh, I'm doing the podcast twice a week, and he was excited about that and brings up, you know, the the name of the podcast, Ram Skinny, of course, uh, connection with my nickname that I was bestowed at our first uh, radio row together. Uh, just by happenstance, basically. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of our listeners know that whole story, but uh, yeah, it was kind of fun reminiscing uh, of, of those uh, early days of the LAFB. Love it. Love it. Yeah, well, good. Well, um, you know, you and you and I are both uh, transplants here in Los Angeles, so I know um, hopefully you got to spend some good time with friends out here and enjoyed some weather. And I was traveling a bunch, but was actually here in LA for Christmas, flew back on Christmas Eve, so it was uh, a little bummer. We literally left. So I was in, uh, we recorded a show together when I was in Baltimore. Then I went to New York. And then I was in Denver visiting my my family out there. And we woke up Christmas Eve morning. We flew home. We had, right, we had a 9 a.m. flight from Denver to L.A. Woke up to three inches of snow. And it was snowing and beautiful. And it's like, man, I did not want to leave. Because everyone dreams of a white Christmas. And we we had that opportunity. But flew back to to sunny SoCal and the palm trees. Yeah, well, we were just uh, checking the weather uh, in the uh, great state of New York, uh, where, well, I guess New Jersey, where uh, Rams will be playing. It's going to be a balmy 42 on the East Coast, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, I was I was kind of excited, maybe a little bit of flurries or something cold there, but it's just going to be a nice day. Yeah, I mean, it was it was warm when I was there. It's, it's funny. I was literally so I was in Baltimore three days after the Rams played in Baltimore against the Rams. And then I was in New York a week before the Rams play the Giants in, I mean, East Rutherford, but basically New York. Um, so I'm like, damn, I'm just missing these these Rams. And then obviously they'll they'll go up to Santa Clara at the end of the season. No plans to go to San Francisco, but hey, maybe we'll make the trip up there. Maybe we'll just maybe we'll just do it. It's after the New Year, New Year resolution. Maybe we'll go up. I don't know. We'll see. We'll play it sounds like fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, but anyway, hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas. We thank you all for giving us the gift of your listenership and support. It means the world to us. We love seeing this show grow. If you're on YouTube please hit that like and subscribe button. If you're not, search Rams LAFB on YouTube. You will find us. Or obviously everything can be found on our website, lafbnetwork.com or Rams Skinny, wherever you get your podcast. Rams Giants. There's some scenarios we were talking pre-show where the Rams can actually lock up a playoff spot this week. We're going to get all into that and what this game can look like for our Los Angeles Rams. But first, big shout out to our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Everyone, please do yourself a favor. Go to underdogfantasy.com or as most people nowadays living in the 21st century, go on your iPhone or Android, go to the App Store or the Google Play Store, download the Underdog Fantasy app. When you go to make your first deposit, minimum $10, put in our promo code RAMSLAFB. That's all one word, RAMSLAFB. It's going to get you a match bonus deposit up to $100. You put in 50, you get 50 free dollars. You put in a hundred, you get a hundred free dollars to play with. It's a fun pick them two to five players. You pick across any sport, any league, pick the over under. That's all you do. You get it right. You win money. Easy to win 20 X up to 100 X. If you play the chili peppers, like I like to, it's a lot of fun. Erdog fantasy. Tell them the guys at the Rams. Can he sent you promo code Rams L A F B. So here we go. Five and 10 giants. Eight and seven Los Angeles Rams. I've talked to many people, Skinny T. I do another show, a national show. The Rams are what many are saying, the team no one wants to play in the NFC. Even more so than the Niners, which I don't necessarily agree with that yet. But after that game on Monday night, the Niners obviously look beatable. But hey, every team's do a bad game. And that was truly a bad game against a very good Baltimore team. The Rams did play them better. However, that's a different story. Your overall thoughts going into this game in New York 
at MetLife Stadium. No Tommy Cutlets. It'll be Tarod Taylor getting the start for the G-Men. But just what's your overall thoughts before we dive into it? That's the thing that scares me right there. Uh, Tyrod Taylor this year is the gunslinger for the Giants. He's got the uh, 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 longest a dot, I guess, longest average depth of target. Which um, for with this Rams defense, if there's something that c- they can be beaten by, it is uh, a deep passing game. If they want to bully them, if they want to bully the the Rams. That's how they can. That, that's how they can do that. Now I'm still gonna at the end of the show. You'll we'll get the official picks in, but I'm still picking the Rams to win. But, you know, if Saquon Barkley gets going and they're able to start slinging that down the field, um, you know, this could be a, a longer day for the Rams. So they got to they got to make sure they're prepared, showing up to play this Giants team and, and not looking forward to those playoffs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you got to you got to look at the week in your schedule. I think that's was my overall thought, too, is we talked about it with the commanders game of, hey, this is a, this is a team that is you know, outmatched. The Rams are clearly a better football team. Will they come out and, and jump out early? Will they be able to put this game away early? And I thought they did a good job. They let the commanders kind of come back in the end there, unfortunately. But overall, the game was in hand kind of throughout. And that needs to be this. You can't be looking ahead to that Niners game. You can't be looking ahead at playoff scenarios. You got to say, all. I mean, the Rams really, all they, if they went out, they're in, no matter what. No matter what happens, they control their destiny. They win their final two games. They're in the playoffs. So you have to start with this week against the G-Men on the road in New York early start. And you got to say, okay, as long as we go and do our job, we're one step closer to making the playoffs, which is still remarkable for what people thought this team was going to be heading into the year. So um, I think I agree with you. We'll get into the nitty gritty, but as long as they play their brand of football, which as we've talked about many times is now a gritty grunge type of football. It's not the glitz and glam like it used to be. As long as they play that brand and stick to it and, and play smart and don't turn the ball over, you know, they'll come out on top and one step closer to the playoff spot. So, um, yeah, just got to can't look ahead of the Giants because those are the teams that can beat you when they got nothing to play for. But playing spoiler, it's almost like they uh, they have more to play for when they can play spoiler. There's less pressure. They just play loose and and uh, make big plays. And like you said, Terod Taylor can be that gunslinger because what does he have to lose? And we've seen our secondary give up those big plays. So that is not what needs to happen on Sunday. So looking at Terod Taylor. Skinny T, let's let's talk about him a little bit. You know, Tommy Cutlets was all the rage. Tommy DeVito, <laughs> you met his agent, or should I say, was stiffed by his agent. Great story you shared that I did not even know a few weeks ago. Now being demoted, um, what's your thoughts on that? Do you think it's a, a smart food move? Do you think it's more of just, uh, you know, a, a, let's see what we got in Tarad? <laughs> I mean, they got nothing to play for. What's just kind of your thoughts on that, and what does it mean for the Rams? Yeah, I well, we've seen the Rams kind of get uh, taken taken by surprise by some backup quarterbacks. Uh, Joe Flacco put on a, a heck of a show uh, when uh, Jacoby Brissett came in. He scored a touchdown against the Rams. Uh, so I, you know, I, I don't want to see any more uh, uh, backup quarterbacks coming in here and uh, running all over the field on uh, on the Rams. So, um, you know, I'm am I actually worried about Tyrod Taylor? Not 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 terribly. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that, you know, when the game when the game plan kind of flips over, you got to you got to make uh, adjustments really quickly and you got to be prepared. And it's hard to be prepared for a guy that hasn't uh, played starting football. Uh, you know, he's had a few games. He played uh, he played 16 snaps in 2022. He was a Houston Texan before that uh, um, in 2021. But, you know, he hasn't played a lot of football, so we're not not entirely sure what he's going to look like out there. And that kind of, a uh, that can kind of surprise teams and catch teams off, off guard a bit. Um, and, uh, you know, it makes you, it makes you wonder if, you know, they're going to up that, uh, Saquon Barkley, uh, you know, uh, if, is, if, is he going to get more snaps? Is he going to get more attention? Is he going to get, uh, you know, is, is he going to be like a, uh, a safety valve for Tyrod Taylor, you know, just coming out of the backfield, running the ball more and, you know, he, he hasn't had a great year, Saquon Barkley, um, but he's still, he can still hit those home runs, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, the, the NFL is, is different than college in, in the fact that, you know, college can really, I want to say hide things, but they don't have to report a lot of during the week until like game of like injuries. Like, you know, I mean, I cover the USC Trojans. I'm at practices and you know, nothing of injuries unless you somehow something gets leaked or you like straight up ask. Uh, and then sometimes you don't find out till like 
when they're dressing at the game, like all of a sudden a, a star player is not dressed and you're like, Oh wow, I guess like I got injured during practice. NFL is very different than that. That being said though, I am surprised a little bit that Brian Dable head coach announced Tyrod Taylor as a starter so early. I mean, here we are on Wednesday. It was announced, uh, was it this morning or last night, even that Tyrod Taylor would be the starter moving forward, at least for this week. Um, and you know, I, I I know he would tell his team regardless because they got to get the first team reps. Um, but you'd think maybe they, he would wait a few just to kind of, you know, the element of gamesmanship to keep the Rams guessing of who they're going to prepare for. Cause it's kind of a benefit to the Rams. Now they know, okay, it's Tyra Taylor going forward. Like we're good. At least, like you said, there's not a lot of tape on him, but he does have a lot of years in the NFL. Um, he's been around the league. He played here in LA for a little bit with the chargers. He was, he had a good stint with Buffalo um, right before Dable got there when Rex Ryan was still the head coach. Um, so, I mean, he's got some tape on him. And so I, I'm, you know, I'm just a little, again, the rules are different and the scenarios are different. There's a lot more access in the NFL. So I'm sure maybe a reporter could see who was getting reps and maybe that's why he got in front of it, but it benefits the Rams that they know this early that, you know, Taylor is the guy that they can prepare for. Now, is it a huge difference? I mean, I don't think this giant's def- offense is anything to be worried about. You know, the la- the Rams have benefited. They played a I think they played a pretty brutal schedule. I was talking about on another show. You know, you look at their seven losses um, outside of the bad loss to the Packers with no Matthew Stafford and the blowout loss to the, the Cowboys. I mean, they took the Ravens to overtime, lost the Eagles by one possession, lost the Niners by one possession, lost the Steelers by one possession and kind of a refs caused loss, if you will. Um, they played a lot of really, really close games and, you know, they've won some good games as well. And down the stretch, though, they've been afforded some weak offenses they've got to play, right? Like with the commanders, the saints have not been great. And now the giants. So this is a true, and this is where we get into skinny, like not overlooking because this is a game where you can really get right on defense heading into that Niners game. Seeing as the Niners lost, they're going to be playing for something most likely and won't have that number one seed locked up. But you obviously don't want to look ahead. But this is a game where the defense can truly get right if they can, you know, get a lot of pressure on Terod Taylor, they can stifle Saquon Barkley, and they can not give up any big plays. They got to feel pretty good heading into that Week 18 matchup with the Niners. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I'm kind of curious if there's any uh, Rams fans out there that were in, maybe in a little bit in the back of their mind were just rooting for the uh, 49ers to win the against the Ravens just a little bit so that uh, they might rest their starters in week 18, have that uh, first uh, buy uh, uh, all wrapped up. But uh, that's beside the point. I'm just curious. Hit me up on Twitter if uh, anybody was just a little, maybe a little bit or if the, the hatred was just <laughs> just uh, uh, burning hot. Um, yeah, and I think that, you know, while while the, the Giants are not a great offensive team, um, they have a, a pretty formidable defense. In terms of turnovers, they've created 24 turnovers 14 interceptions 10 10 fumbles recovered um and you know they they blitz a lot and i'll yeah. say that if there is anything that uh stifles the rams is a good blitzing team now the giants aren't a great blitzing team they actually don't generate a lot of pressure but they do blitz a lot so that's another thing to look for and um you know the offensive line has done a, a done a bang up job of uh, you know keeping uh, Stafford upright, um, so I'm I'm not entirely worried about it. But they do go from one of the best offenses in the league, especially over the last few weeks, to number twenty when they're blitzed. So um, you know, again, not looking past this team, uh, you can't do it. Um, and you know, there's there are some matchup uh, you know uh, things that you have to watch out for, and 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 the, the offensive line just has to do another another bang up job. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you said it, this is a defense led by what Wink Martindale, who obviously a lot of experience around the league has led some great Ravens defenses and now with the giants and, you know, he, he can doctor up some great blitzes and, and some schematic packages that is going to try to fool this, this Rams team and staff. I think what's been exciting. I mean, I'm sure you saw that stat floating around that we all know, you know, when, when Stafford cup, Puka Nakua and Kyron Williams are on the field at the same time. Like this is the number one offense in every single statistical category in the NFL, which is, you know, um, amazing. I mean, it's it just hats off to the coaching staff and hats off to these players who have, have played so well. And I, and that's against some very good defenses. That's against the Browns. That's against the Ravens, this Ravens defense that absolutely dominated the Niners. The Rams offense played pretty well in Baltimore against that defense. And, you know, every week is so different in the NFL. I think that's what, 
you know, be, people need to realize it's, you know, every week is so, so different the way you game plan, the way you scheme. Um, some teams have off games, in the NFL, like it's not college. We have an off game, your season's over. Like you can rebound pretty quickly, but I think it, it, it should be very promising when you see how this Rams team has played against this Rams offense specifically against some of these defense. So let's, let's talk about this offense quickly with some key matchups. And you look at the, you know, you look at this, this gi giant's defense and I'll kind of put you on the spot here and talk while you, while you think, when you look at Kyron Williams, or you look at Puka Nakua or Cooper cup, like who are some guys on that defense or even on the defensive line that you're kind of keying in on of a, who should the Rams attack or B who should they stay away from? Or who's just a key player in their defense that like, okay, this is a guy that maybe can disrupt some things for the Rams offense that has been firing in all cylinders since the bye week. Well, you know, the first guy you got to think about, and this isn't necessarily in talking about stopping uh, Kyron particularly, but uh, Kayvon Thibodeau has 13 sacks on the season. Yeah. Um, so he's dude, been getting home. Improved a lot. Yeah. And, you know, they got Dexter Lawrence as well on that line. And, and that's just the, you know, the, the edge rushers. I'm just going to take a quick peek and see how they are, how they've been doing against the run, you know. Um, so, you know, they're they're 19th against the uh, gap run schemes, which is primarily, well, about half and half of, of what the, the uh, Rams run. So, you know, I think that once again, a big Kyron Williams game is 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 what the doctor ordered on this one. Um, so that's what I want to see more of. And, you know, I don't want to say it just because he's been playing so well, but, you know, is Stafford due for a, a turnover or two in this game? No, don't <laughs> say they it. are so good at, <laughs> since don't they say are it. so good at creating turnovers. I I'm not manifesting anything here, guys. I'm, I'm just a uh, spitball here, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think the pat their past defense is just much stronger than their run defense. And, uh, you know, I would, Love to see just another, you know, looking at Kyron's stats, it's just incredible. It's yeah. just incredible what he's doing. And, you know, hats off again to McVeigh for making the shift and, and, and finding the back and, you know, having the courage to move on from uh, Cam, Cam, Cam Akers earlier this year and, and, and go with uh, Kyron. Um, so, yeah, I mean, another, another big Kyron game. That's my, that's my matchup. And, you know, just keep, you know, keep running it up the middle, hitting those A gaps. And I think they're going to be just fine. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really, I think we mentioned it on the last show after the Saints game, but, excuse me, but, you know, dude's missed four games and he has over a thousand yards rushing. I mean, it's it's remarkable what you take out a few of the unfortunate fumbles. And to me, he's having one of the best seasons for a running back. Um, not, I'm not saying ever, but this year, he's one of the top backs. And even with the fumbles, he's probably considered one of the top backs in the NFL this season. And, you know, should be a Pro Bowl player, absolutely. And, and they found... They're Todd Gurley. We talk about it all the time. I don't want to keep bringing it up, but it's true. And you're, as I believe you're writing an article about comparing kind of Todd Gurley to Kyron Williams. So you can find that on LAPnetwork.com here soon. But just what he brings to the offense. And when you're able to run your offense through a back of that caliber, it opens things up so much more for the Cooper Cups, for the Puka Nakua's, for the Tyler Higbees, for the other guys, because it just keeps the defense so honest when they have to respect a back of that caliber that not only can run in those gaps, but can also catch the ball in the backfield. And then guess what? You got these great receivers that are lighting the world on fire. So they truly have found something there. And I agree with you because you look at their passing defense, you know, former USC legend, Adore Jackson had a great pick six last week against the Eagles. And he's, he's a great playmaker on the back end there. So you want to stay away from a you know, if possible, you know, you look at this defense, really skinny team. When you look at the names, I mean, it's a solid defense. They, they went and got Isaiah Simmons from Arizona, former sixth overall pick. You mentioned Dexter Lawrence, you know, Darnay Holmes, former UCLA Bruin. Bobby Okariki is a solid uh, linebacker. They have Ashawn Robinson. Obviously, many, many people know him, former Ram. And then, as you mentioned, Kayvon Thibodeau. So um, they've got playmakers. They haven't put it all together. I'm not worried about it. But like you said, I think the run game is what this Rams team should focus on. And it's going to open things up for the pass game, but you don't want to you don't want to have to pepper Adore Jackson because he can make you pay. He is a very talented player um, and just a a playmaker on the defensive side of the ball. So um, heavy doses of Kyron Williams is always a good thing for this offense, and I would expect them to do that more. I don't know if we'll see nine straight runs to open the game like we did against Baltimore, but I wouldn't be mad about it. I'd be very pleased yeah, why not? they stick with it in the red zone, right? Yeah, yeah, they're you know they're 
you know, in the twenties in their last few games in terms of their ranking of their red red zone touchdown efficiency. And he's, I, I, you know, I mentioned it in the last couple of weeks, I think. And, uh, you know, let's, let's just turn that around. Let's clean that up. You know, uh, you know, let's not find ourselves in third down situations, um, and keep running the ball, keep, keep running the ball in the, in the, in the red zone. Um, I think you just said that actually, so I don't need to drive that point home anymore, but you know, Kyron Williams is just doing such a great job and, um, you know, against, uh, the, uh, that kind of, the kind of lighter, I don't think they run lighter boxes necessarily, but they're just not, they're a little bit soft against the run game. So let's, let's, uh, you know, get some conversation more, you know, let's get some more national, uh, attention for Kyron Williams and another over, a plus hundred yard game for him. Absolutely. So look at the defense quickly. We kind of touched on that earlier. When we're talking about Terod Taylor, um, Darius Slayton, Saquon Barkley, Darren Waller. I mean, that's, that's kind of it when you look at their offense. Is there any anyone that worries you? I mean, Slayton had a nice play uh, last week against the Eagles, a, a big touchdown play. So um, I think as long as Jordan Fuller can play sound football, not cheat up on any of those deep crossing patterns, they'll be okay. But anyone on offense you're really worried about, or as long as this defense plays to their level, I mean, it should be a, a pretty low-scoring game for the Giants. Yeah, Jalen Hyatt, Hyatt's got some speed. Um, and you know, he's a deep threat. Um, he hasn't had a great year by, by any means, but, uh, just, a a guy that if, if, if they're able to get Saquon churning, getting, getting fuller to come down a little bit more, getting, uh, Ernest Jones to, uh, have to cheat up a, a little bit more, um, and, and trying to get pressure that way. That's, that's, uh, maybe when you can see, uh, a J- Jalen Hyatt kind of have a, a big, uh, big game, put some points on the board, but, yeah, I mean, just offensively. I, I mean, I don't know. Tyler, Tyrod Taylor isn't the spark that this offense needs. I don't think that's yeah. going to turn their season around magically. Uh, the, the offense has just been, been, been bad, um, and uh, you know they're they're going to have to do some soul searching that they didn't do last season, last off season, this off season. So, um, you know, I think I think if if things go right, and we're not seeing uh, 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 Stafford turn into Brock Purdy turning the ball over four times. Um, and, and they Rock stick with wood. their run. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think this defense just needs to continue to play to the level that they had, uh, been playing, um, and generate some pressure. I think that's all they need to do to, to really seal this game from the defensive side anyway. Um, and you know, he had such a great beginning to the season and he's had a, a very solid rookie season, but I want to see Byron young have a really big game. Mm. Um, and you know, they've generated so much pressure from the middle and you got Kobe Turner, you got, uh, uh, obviously Aaron Donald right there. So, uh, that's great, but I just want to see some more edge pressure. Um, and I've been wishing for that all season long. I've been wishing for that since, uh, Leonard, uh, Floyd, uh, went away. Uh, but, uh, you know, I want to see if if uh, Byron Young has some, you know, one two punches instead of just one punch. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that would be great. So, um, quickly, what's your thoughts on? Uh, I got kind of two things. Talk this. I want to talk some awards, and then we'll end with uh, playoff clinching scenarios and, and uh, score predictions. So, what's your thoughts on on Brian Dable, their head coach? Do you, I mean, obviously, some bad luck at quarterback with the injury to Danny dimes and whatnot, but um, seems like a guy that, you know, they made the playoffs last year and this year has been really, really bad. Is it solely based on the quarterback? Or do you think he's, he's some to blame? Cause it doesn't seem like a coach that's really gotten, at least from what I can tell much criticism on the outside, probably because of the the quarterback going down. Well, he had such a great first year and he got so much attention because he kind of he didn't do what a lot of coaches do, which is just bring in a bunch of their friends to to fill out the staff. He went out and he found he got Wink Martindale and he, you know, he, you know, really diversified the coaching staff and obviously did a good job job last year. But, you know, a lot of people compare their offseason to the Vikings offseason. And the Vikings had a much clearer picture of what their team actually, how good their team actually was. Uh, they won a bunch of games last year by one score or, or less, and 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 now we're seeing that luck regress. And it seemed like the the Giants went into the offseason thinking we're good. We just need one or two extra players uh, to round it out. And um, you know, bad bad injury luck is one thing, but paying a guy like uh, Daniel Jones. 
you know, they didn't break the bank on it by any means, but I don't, he's not the answer. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't love him last year. Certainly didn't play any better this year. And they, they, they went into this season thinking this is our, this is our guy. Um, and in, instead of going, all right, like who, who else can we bring in here? You know, Joe Flacco is Joe Flacco better than uh, Danny Dimes. I would, I would say so. Uh, yeah. So that's, you know, I think, you know, coaching is coaching is hard, but that's the, you have to have those hard conversations with yourself and your staff and your organization, and and have that you know a clear idea of 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 who you are and what you are heading into the off season and the changes you need to make, and you know pay you know it that's that's where I'm going to ding them. You know, it's yeah paying paying a guy to 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 be the guy that isn't the guy. You know, yeah. I mean, well, we you know we don't cover the Giants. I don't cover, like, but we know enough about the NFL that like when he went down. It wasn't to me. I mean, he's obviously their starter. He's better than Tommy yeah. DeVito and, and Terod Taylor. So I'm not saying that. I don't want to get my words misconstrued. But it wasn't like, like when Vikings lost Kirk Cousins. It's like okay, probably the season's over without some miracle. And they've they've you know they've still played very competitive. If Matthew Stafford goes down, that's it. The Rams that they're done. They're toast. Like no shot. As we saw in the one game he didn't play. Yeah. Um, you see it across the the jets Aaron Rodgers goes down like Danny dimes goes down. And I wasn't like, I was like, Oh, you know, they could still surprise. I, I didn't think it was like a catastrophic loss. Cause I just don't think his war was that much greater than maybe the person beneath him. Um, and the fact that they committed to him when everyone out there kind of was like, well, is he really the guy, but you're committing to this big contract. And then you see a team like the Broncos just today who are going to be paying Russ 39 million next year basically said like yeah we know you're not the guy so we don't we'll eat the cost to move on and obviously it was a different regime that signed him than is there now with sean payton so that's a different scenario a little bit but it goes to your point of that conviction of like this is what our team needs to be moving forward and the brian dable led giants it seemed like they never really fully knew like he didn't draft danny dimes their gm sheen didn't draft danny dimes but they still were like well we don't want to be in that qb purgatory so we'll pay him and now they may be um they may be in QB purgatory for the next, you know, three or four seasons, depending how it goes. So speaking of quarterbacks, I want to kind of end with this a little bit. Matthew Stafford, as it stands right now, is not on the odd sheet for MVP, at least according to our friends at BetOnline. BetOnline.ag, promo code BELIEVE, gets you a 50% welcome bonus. Go to BetOnline.ag. As it stands right now, Lamar Jackson, this is BetOnline, so everyone has a little different odds, but Lamar Jackson's the favorite followed by Chris McCaffrey, Josh Allen, Tua Tungavailoa. Brock Purdy fell all the way down to fifth after that performance. Tyreek Hill, Dak Prescott, and somehow Patrick Mahomes is still on here. I have no idea how he had a, a pretty, in my opinion, a bad quarterback season. No Matthew Stafford. To me, that is blasphemous. I, I, seeing what this Rams team is, statistically, he's having a pretty good year, too. It's not like he's having horrible stats. Statistically, I'll, I'll look while you're talking exactly where he stands, but he's doing pretty well statistically. But just where this Rams team is with the roster they have, and you see guys like Puka Nakua having the season he's having, you see guys like Kyrie Williams, a lot of that stems from because of Matthew Stafford. I cannot believe he is not at least on the odd sheet for MVP. Like, I, if he was on there, I'd be putting money on him because you never know. To you, is it is it fair that he's not, or is it shocking that he's not in this MVP conversation? It's shocking. Yeah. I mean, um, he's just commanding this offense just so well. Uh, you know, Puka Nakua is, is obviously having a good year and he deserves a lot of credit. But if it, if he ends up on a different team, if he ends up on the Giants, let's say, like they're not going to use him in the right way in, in their offense. I don't want to talk crap about other teams, but, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, he, you know he what he's doing with his arm angles and and just you know just improvising and and I think he's having the best season of his career. I don't know if I've said that yet publicly, but I think he I think this is just masterful what he's doing. He's yeah you know like you think about 2021 and you know he had you know Cooper Cup deserves Cooper Cup, Cup was doing a lot in that offense. I think if you're going to name an MVP from that year, I would think you would say of, from the Rams team is would be Cooper Cup more than Stafford. Um, but this year, it's all this is all Stafford. He's just he's commanding this offense. Um, you know the throws he's making. Only a handful of guys can actually make those throws in this league. You know Pat Mahomes. You know is one of them. But yeah, I mean. 
and and then the, the run that he's been on uh in the since coming back from that injury has just been phenomenal i mean he's if it's just any statistic any advanced metric he's just leading he's he's one of the best especially now that brock purdy had such a terrible game you know he's surpassed him in 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 a lot of ways and you know I'm not I don't want to take anything away from Lamar Jackson. I think I think he, he should win this. I mean, he's improved so much uh you know and he's just made that team the best team in the league right now. Mm-hmm. So, I think he should win the award, but he's I mean, he's got <laughs> Stafford should be should be among those guys. I mean, I think he's having a, he's having a better year than Dak Prescott, I think. He's having a better year than uh Patrick Mahomes even, you know. So, yeah, I it's incredible. I, I just, I'll never understand this. <laughs> so let me let me ask you this, and I'm not saying you're wrong because I agree. I think Lamar is having a great season in terms of, you know, what he is doing in Baltimore. Um, however, if we're taking out just purely wins, with which a lot of people argue is not a QB stat. Matthew Stafford out. He has two more interceptions than Lamar. He has nine. Lamar has seven. Matthew Stafford has more yards, has more touchdowns, has a higher QBR and a higher rate QB rating. And Lamar is the favorite and Stafford's not even on the list. So I, it's, it's shocking to me that, and this is nothing against Lamar because I, I love Lamar and I think he's doing well, but the fact that he's the favorite with very remedial, like just pure QB statistics He's having a very remedial season. Obviously, he adds some to the rushing game. That's that's where the difference comes in. And that's probably what skyrockets him. But in terms of just passing, Stafford's got to beat in everything. And so it's just, and I'm not even really asking you because I think we're on the same page, but just like, it's just amazing that Stafford's not even in the conversation. And I think Rams fans would agree. And even nationally, it's like, look at where this Rams team is considering where everyone thought they'd be. Like the, the Ravens, again, no disrespect. They are the favorite in the AFC. They proved that on Christmas Day Eve when they throttled the Niners, and they didn't get a lot of respect as a team. But going into the season, they were considered a playoff team going into the year. Like, no one denied that. The Rams were considered a three- to four-win team by most, and here they are. If they win this week with some help, they could clinch the playoffs in Week 17. So it's just amazing the Stafford's not even in that talks. Yeah, and I would love to have a conversation with that guy from the Super Bowl, we always reference this. Who mm, didn't think yeah. uh, he was a top ten in the in the NFC even? Um, and I, 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 I want to have a conversation with maybe maybe that guy doesn't know ball, as they say. Maybe he doesn't know ball. Um, I want to have a conversation crazy, with somebody that what's that? Sorry, I just want to correct. Lamar Jackson does have a higher rating than Stafford. I want to no. correct that real quick. Go ahead. Um, I want to have a conversation with. A, a Stafford disbeliever and find out exactly what it is that they see or they don't like about his game um, that they, yeah. they're just able to, to, to rank him so low. Um, and, and actually I did, cause I didn't listen to that guy when he was talking. I was like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, obviously. <laughs> so I just want I'll this time I'll listen. If anybody wants to have this conversation with me, I'll listen. And I'm just going to, I'm going to absorb all your talking points and, and you know all the things you can take away from him. So yeah, if, if there's anybody out there that wants to illuminate me to your position of of Stafford not being uh, considered for the MVP, uh, I'll, I'll open ears. It's unreal. So we're going to start a campaign here at the LA Football Network on the Rams skinny Stafford for MVP. Maybe we make some T-shirts, right? Some campaign shirts. Stafford for MVP, at least get him on the voting ballot. Like, unbelievable. This guy is not on there, especially if they go out and, and dominate this weekend. Um, you know, it's we we know, this is why I love this game of football. It's such a team sport, right? Like, the quarterback can obviously elevate so many players. And I've talked many times, the receiver is the most um, contingent position, really, in all of sports. Like, it requires so much of everyone else for you to be considered elite because you got the ball thrown to you. You have to have the right route called. You have to have different coverages maybe that get you open. Obviously, there are better receivers than others, and that's why they're the great ones. But we've seen also a quarterback, when quarterbacks can elevate their receiver's game. And Puka Nakua is phenomenal. I don't want to take anything away from Puka Nakua. The surprise of the league should win offensive rookie of the year. I know CJ Stroud probably is the lock, but after missing a few weeks, I think Puka Nakua, especially if he breaks that record, like got to at least consider him a, a potential favorite. He's number two right now. Phenomenal. But 
no one can deny that he is having the season he's having because of the quarterback that is getting him the rock, creating space for him, throwing him open the way that Matthew Stafford does. Um, and so I just, yeah, it's just wild to me that, uh, he's not in conversation, but we'll start a campaign, Matthew Stafford for MVP. Let's get it going here on LAFB, uh, wrap up the show. Skinny T score predictions. We do it every week. Why not? Let's keep it going. We've been close a few times. You've been close a lot more than me. I think who you got in this one and what's your score prediction. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm leaning Rams, uh, and I'm gonna say that uh, dom, dominant performance get over thirty again, uh, thirty five to thirteen. Thirty five to thirteen, I love it. Yeah, I think they get over thirty again as well. Um, I think they they close this one out. I know they the last few weeks they've let teams hung hung around. They got off to big leads and they let the Commanders and Saints both kind of come back in it. I think they lock that down this week. Um, so I will go 31 to 14, two touchdowns for, for the giants, 31, 14, 35, 13. We'll keep it close and interesting. Um, if the Rams were to win, we were talking about this before the show. We didn't have a ton of time to deep dive into it, but pretty confident this is accurate. So anyone in the comments, if we're wrong, feel free to crucify us. If the Rams win this week and the Seahawks lose, the Vikings lose, the Packers lose and the Falcons lose. The Rams would clinch a playoff spot going into the week 18 bout with the Niners. So win out they're in no matter what, go ahead. Quick correction there. The Vikings play the Packers this week, so they both can't lose this week. Unfortunately, maybe okay, they'll tie. I don't know. I don't know. What does a tie do <laughs> for them? Yeah. But, uh, uh, okay. Well, good. Okay. That's good to know. Cause we were trying to figure out what, if there was a scenario where if, everything falls into place. They could clinch. So it looks like they cannot clinch, but would look pretty good heading into that final week, but went out and they're in, you beat the giants, you beat the Niners Rams are in the playoffs um, at 10 and seven. So that's what uh, you want to do. Go in with uh, some momentum. We shall see everyone. Enjoy the game. Hope everyone had a great Christmas. We will be back. We'll probably record a show before, before the new year. We'll try to new year's. What is new year's day on Monday this year? Uh, New I Year's think. Day is on Monday. Yeah, yeah. We may right. be actually recording our recap show on New Year's Day. So if we don't talk to you beforehand, everyone have a very happy New Year's Eve celebration. Um, be safe. You know, make sure to get your rides situated before leaving the house. But everyone have a blast. And we cannot wait to talk to you all in 2024. Take this thing to the next level. So thank you all for supporting the Rams Skinny Podcast. Thank you all for supporting the LA Football Network. It means the world to us. We've seen a record year here in 2023 and cannot wait to make 2024 that much better as hopefully your voice for LA football here in the Southland. For Ryan Skinny T. Anderson, I'm Ryan Dyer. Everyone have a great weekend. Enjoy the game. Go Rams. Talk to you in 2024. Take care.